हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी वर्टिकल अलाइनमेंट नाउ वर्टिकल अलाइनमेंट इज सब डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट्स फर्स्ट वन इज ग्रेडिएंट एंड द नेक्स्ट वन इज वर्टिकल कर्व नाउ ग्रेडिएंट इज फर्दर सब डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर पार्ट्स दैट इज रूलिंग ग्रेडिएंट लिमिटिंग ग्रेडिएंट एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडिएंट एंड मिनिमम ग्रेडिएंट सिमिलरली वर्टिकल कर्व इज आल्सो सब डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट्स दैट इज समिट कर्व एंड द वैली कर्व नाउ व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय ग्रेडिएंट ग्रेडिएंट इज द राइज और फॉल ऑफ रोड अलोंग लॉन्गिट्यूडिनल डायरेक्शन नाउ इट इज जनरली हैविंग टू टाइप्स first one is rising gradient or positive gradient and the next one is falling or negative gradient now rising gradient is shown here when there will be positive slope like this then it is known as positive gradient or rising gradient and it will be equals to tan theta which will be equals to perpendicular upon base that is s upon 100 so gradient will be equals to s percent similarly for falling or descending or negative gradient there will be minus s because the vehicle will move in the downward direction so tan theta will be equals to minus s upon 100 which will be equals to minus s percent so the gradient is negative in the falling or descending gradient now the first gradient is ruling gradient what do you mean by ruling gradient it is the maximum gradient which a designer wants to provide to the vertical profile of road generally it is given by the designer only it is also known as design gradient it depends upon topography design speed and cost of construction now the next gradient is the limiting gradient it is steeper than ruling gradient and is provided only when cost of construction by ruling gradient is high as compared to the cost of construction by limiting gradient it means that we will provide limiting gradient in case when the cost of construction by ruling gradient is very high so we will provide limiting gradient there but we never compromise with the pulling power of the vehicle it means that the gradient will always be less than the pulling power of the vehicle otherwise vehicle will not travel along that gradient now the next is the exceptional gradient it is steeper than above two gradients and it is provided when situation is unavoidable it should not be provided for length more than 100 meter it means that when the situation is unavoidable and we have to connect the two vertical points by a steeper gradient then we have to provide the exceptional gradient and it should not be provided for length more than 100 meter now the next is the minimum gradient minimum gradient is provided for drainage purpose in order to allow gravity flow of water inside the drainage system it means that the minimum gradient is only provided for the drainage purpose as per indian road congress for concrete drain system minimum gradient is 1 in 500 and for open soil drain minimum gradient is 1 in 200 minimum gradient will be less than ruling gradient and ruling gradient will be less than limiting gradient and limiting gradient will be less than exceptional gradient and all the gradients will be less than pulling power of the vehicle now in this table we had written the gradient as per the indian road congress for different types of terrain for rolling and plain terrain ruling gradient is 3.3% limiting gradient is 5% and exceptional gradient is 6.7% similarly for mountainous and steep terrain when elevation is greater than 3000 meter above mean sea level then ruling gradient will be 5% limiting gradient 6% and exceptional gradient 7% and for mountainous and steep terrain case when the elevation is up to 3000 meter above msl then ruling gradient will be 6% limiting gradient will be 7% and exceptional gradient will be 8% now one note is written here that at higher elevation lesser gradient is provided which is shown here that is at higher elevation lesser gradient is provided because availability of oxygen is less due to which less fuel burn and it reduces the pulling power of vehicle so if the availability of oxygen is very less at very high altitude then it reduces the pulling power of the vehicle so 
to counteract this effect we have to reduce the gradient at higher elevation now the next will be the gradient compensation when there is horizontal curve in addition to the gradient there will be increased in resistance to tractive force due to curve and gradient it means that when there is a horizontal curve in addition to the gradient then it will reduce the pulling power of the vehicle because it will provide resistance to the tractive forces in this case irc suggested to compensate the grade so that pulling power of vehicle should not be compromised now grade compensation will be equals to 30 plus r upon r where r is the radius of the curve maximum grade compensation will be equals to 75 upon r now we have to select one value which is the minimum of both these values okay now compensated gradient will be equals to the gradient which is already given in the question minus grade compensation so grade compensation is the minimum between the grade compensation and maximum grade compensation which we had seen here now one note is there that as per indian road congress grade compensation is not required for gradient flatter than 4% it means that when the gradient is flatter than 4% then we don't required any grade compensation and compensated gradient should not be less than 4% it means that the minimum value of compensated gradient will be equals to 4% now next vertical alignment is the curve summit curve are vertical curve with convexity upward and concavity downward like this it is formed by two gradient in following ways the first one will be when an ascending gradient meets another ascending gradient like this that is plus n1% and plus n2% so change in gradient that is n will be equals to modulus n1 minus n2 which is written here now the second case will be when an ascending gradient meets flat gradient it means that the value of n2 will be equals to 0 so change in gradient will be equals to n1 only now the third case will be when an ascending gradient meets descending gradient which is shown here that is plus n1% and minus n2% so n will be equals to n1 plus n2 when a descending gradient meets another descending gradient that is the case 4 so here minus n1% and minus n2% will be the gradient so change in gradient capital n will be equals to in modulus n2 minus n1 now the properties of summit curve generally summit curve have convexity upward and concavity downward like this that is the summit curve vertical point of intersection always lies above the curve it means that the vertical point of intersection will always lies above the curve like this square parabola is generally preferred for summit curve due to the best riding quality and simplicity of calculation it means that for summit curve the best profile is the square parabola ideal shape for summit curve is circular because side distance available throughout the curve is constant now the next property is summit curve is designed only for side distance criteria that is for ssd that is stopping side distance or overtaking side distance or intermediate side distance generally there is no problem of discomfort because weight acts in the downward direction and centrifugal force acts in the upward direction it means that when vehicle is traveling along this summit curve then weight will be acting in this direction that is w and centrifugal force will be acting in this direction that is in upward direction a part of pressure on tire and spring of vehicle get released due to this type of force now we have to find the length of summit curve the first case will be when length of summit curve is greater than side distance it means that when the length of curve which is shown here is greater than the side distance then length of summit curve will be equals to ns square upon 2 in bracket root capital h plus root small h whole square where capital h is the height of driver i small h will be the height of obstruction capital n will be change in gradient and s is the side distance now as per indian road congress for stopping side distance we know that height of driver i is 1.2 meter and height of obstruction is 0.15 meter on putting this value in this equation 
the length of summit curve will be equals to ns square upon 4.4 similarly for overtaking side distance we know that height of driver i is 1.2 meter and height of obstruction is also 1.2 meter on putting this value in the above equation the length of summit curve will be equals to ns square upon 9.6 now case 2 when length of summit curve is less than side distance then length of summit curve will be equals to 2s minus 2 in bracket root capital H plus root small h whole square upon capital N. Now for stopping side distance, we will put capital H value as 1.2 meter and small h value equals to 0 0.15 meter. So we will get the length of summit curve as 2s minus 4.4 upon N. Similarly for overtaking side distance, LS will be equals to 2s minus 9.6 N. Now one note is there that for vertical curves, side distance is always calculated along the chain survey line that is the horizontal line. Direct distance between driver eyes to distraction, hence effect of gradient is not considered in the calculation of stopping side distance. So we had removed the gradient from the equation. So the equation will become 0.278 V into TR where TR is the reaction time and V is the speed of the vehicle plus V square upon 254 F. F is the coefficient of friction. Now the next curve is the valley curve. Valley curve are the vertical curve with concavity upward and convexity downward just like this. Valley curve are found by two gradients in following ways. The first one will be when a descending gradient meets another descending gradient, it means that minus n1% and minus n2%. So, capital N will be equal to n2 minus n1. Similarly, when a descending gradient meets a flat gradient, it means that the value of n2 will be equal to 0. So, capital N will be equal to n1 only. Third case will be when a descending gradient meets an ascending gradient, then capital N will be equal to n1 plus n2. Similarly, the fourth case will be when an ascending gradient meets another ascending gradient that is plus n1% and plus n2%. So, capital N will be equals to n1 minus n2. Now, properties of valley curve. Concavity upward and convexity downward which we had already seen like this. Vertical point of intersection always lies below the curve. It means that the vertical point of intersection always lies below the curve which is shown here. Valley curves are designed taking headlight side distance into account. Headlight side distance is the maximum distance visible through the headlight of vehicle is known as headlight side distance. For safe driving, headlight side distance is always equals to the stopping side distance. At daytime, there is no restriction to side distance, but during night, in absence of street light, the only source of visibility is headlight. Centrifugal force and weight of wheel acting downward hence impact to the wheel to be more which may result in jerking now when a vehicle is traveling along a valley curve like this then centrifugal force and weight both will be acting in the downward direction due to which it can cause uncomfortability to the passengers for gradual introduction of centrifugal force transition curve of cubic parabola shape is generally provided position of lower point of valley curve is given as x equals to length of valley curve that is lv n1 upon 2 into capital n to the power 1 by 2 where n1 is the gradient of first tangent capital n equals to change in gradient lv equals to length of valley curve length of valley curve can be determined by the following cases that is on the basis of headlight side distance when length of valley curve is greater than headlight side distance then length of valley curve will be equals to ns square upon 2h plus 2s tan beta. Here capital N is the change in gradient, a small h is the height of headlight, s is the headlight side distance which is generally taken to be equal to stopping side distance, beta is the beam angle as per Indian Road Congress, beam angle will be equals to 1 degree and small h will be equals to 0 0.75 meter. On putting this value in the above equation, we will have length of valley curve equals to ns square upon 1.5 plus 0.035s. Now, when length of valley curve is less than headlight side distance, then length of valley curve will be equals to 2s minus 2h plus 2s 10 beta upon n. 
on putting the value of h equals to 0.75 meter and beta equals to 1 degree the length of valley curve will be equals to 2s minus 1.5 plus 0.035s upon n now the second criteria is as per comfort condition so length of transition curve we all know that it will be equals to vq upon cr which we had derived in the horizontal transition curve now for vertical curve r equals to lt upon n so we will put the value of r in this equation so length of transition curve will becomes v cube upon c into lt upon n from this we will get the value of length of transition curve as under root of nv cube upon c now length of valley curve is generally two times of length of transition curve so we will put the length of transition curve here and length of valley curve will becomes 2 into under root of nv cube upon c which is shown here now one note is written here that c is the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration as per indian road congress and c should be taken as 0.6 meter per second cube we don't use the formula for calculation of c that is 80 upon 75 plus v as it is valid for spiral curve only so we will put the value of c equals to 0.6 here and after converting the value of v from kilometer per hour to meter per second by multiplying it with 0.278 we will have the length of valley curve equals to 0.378 under root of nv cube now all the equations of summit curve valley curve as per all the criteria are important as per the gate examination point of view that is all about the vertical alignment thank you students